All right. I get started a little early, a couple minutes early. I'll let people like straggle in here. So I just sit here and yak for a couple of minutes. Y'all let me know if you can hear me. Do I have my audio on? Just give me a little thumbs up or something in the uh, comments. Charles, how are you doing? And y'all remind me where you're from. You see how many people come in and out of here. It's kind of hard to remember wherever everyone's from. I live in North Florida. But uh, I'm here. I'm just going to give everybody a quick little update on like what's going on with the, the downspouts. Those orders that buy one, get one free we had going on. Then answer some questions if y'all have anything. Um, talk about a couple a couple little things that are going on. And um, I hear you. Cool. Awesome. Appreciate it. And let's see, Charles, you're on Facebook. So some of you guys, when you're I'm answering comments, you may not hear, you know, some of them are coming from Facebook and some are coming from YouTube. So if you're sitting there watching the comments, I may be answering something and you may not know where it's coming from. And I think if I pop it up here. Yeah, you can see if it's from Facebook or, or from uh, YouTube. So where are we from? Northern California. Cool. How's the weather out there in California? I'm all the way on the East Coast. Central Pennsylvania, Kentucky. Awesome. And how's the weather where everybody's at? Right now, it was like perfect weather. It was like uh, time to go out to picnic. We've got uh, showers and that coming in tonight, but it was like in the low 80s. And at night, it was in the 60s. It was like, like beautiful. All righty. How are y'all growing? Is everybody, let's see, hello from Kentucky. Your picture looks like you've got some peppers or something there. How are y'all growing? You grow traditional, traditional gardens? Y'all doing any hydroponics? And is everybody getting started? I know it's been, let's see, up north, down here, we're starting our, you know, we've got stuff at Home Depot, Lowe's, and the nurseries all have their, their transplants. Um, where y'all live, you know, is it, cool or warm enough to, to start your seedlings. I had some people asking and they were all the way from up in like Pennsylvania, but uh, some places that they still had like snow. It's getting crazy out here. Let's see, it's rainy, uh, cold. Yeah, not the biz. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're only gonna get like one night of rain, but when people, uh, I'm not gonna stay on too long. I'll go ahead, you know, if anybody's got questions about what's going on, they can just go ahead and Put them in the chat. Have it indoor and outside. I'm flirting with aquaponics. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, has anybody else done aquaponics? Have you you looked into it and researched all of it, or have you actually done a little bit of it? I did it for a little while, but like I said, I'm um, on the road a lot, and you have to like take care of the fish. And and at first glance, aquaponics seems kind of cool. You know, you put fish in, they poop. You grow plants. The plants, you know feed the fish it's like a little cycle but there's like this thing with the nitrates and the nitrites and you know when the fish poop and it breaks down and what the fit what the plants need and take up and excess different nitrates or something can build up and it's not really good and you have to like keep an eye on it too because you got to keep it balanced because either the plants will die or your fish can die or both and since i was on the road a lot i didn't want to like take off and like you know if i kill a bunch of plants i come back and plant some more i didn't want to kill a bunch of fish you know, but, you know, if I when I get to the point where I retire and I stay home, I might go ahead and try it. And then you have, you know, you're growing plants and you can eat fish, too. And we're, you know, down here in Florida, we stay fairly warm. You know, you can put a little heater in the water. I know up north it's a little tougher because um, some of the fish that you have to keep with it. You know, we can keep more of a tropical fish. I'm not sure if like tilapia something they use a lot in like the aquaponics because it's an easy fish. But the uh, temperature's got to be right for them. Um, anywho, people who had ordered their, their downspouts and that, I just got in my master blend just a little while ago. I've been waiting on more of that. I ran out. I was packing it up. So I've got loads of boxes, loads of stuff to go. So if you ordered like last week, those are getting ready. I'm going to pack them up. Depends on how many I can get packed labeled in that before closing time tomorrow. But if it doesn't go out tomorrow, it'll go out like the next day. Um, what do we got here? Hydro container indoor organic. Cool. Yeah, no more no more tilling. That's the that's the one thing with like doing something like this, or if you're doing indoor, there is a lot of people that um, can't 
till and then get out there and weed and just do all the stuff um you know the traditional garden takes but like the elderly you know you can take something like that and just pop it on your uh little bench outside your little table or handrail you know grow you some herbs you know it's, it's pretty cool uh i love it there's a lot of people have ordered it and what i'm excited about is when when people start taking them home and using them whoever uses any of these if you built your own or if you bought one or whatever um go ahead and take pictures and send them to me uh join the facebook group i forgot to put it down below but just uh check out keep on growing and search for groups in um facebook we got a group and people get in there and it doesn't matter if you're growing hydro if you're growing traditional uh post some pictures of what you're growing and everything uh there's lots of people in there and uh, uh we like to share you know our pictures and everything and and then there's people in there that will answer questions if you have any questions I try to, you know, I try to pop in there from time to time too. But yeah, I've got, I've got this going. So everything, if you order one, those are going out. And I mean, there's going to be a lot of people growing. And if you made your own, if you guys have tried this out and you made one, and if you make it a little different too, kind of show me pictures, send me pictures or something. Cause I'm kind of a, uh, I like to see what everyone else is doing, but there's one load. I don't know if y'all can see it. That's one load's going to be going to the, the post office. They don't like seeing me coming. I mean, I've got a whole nother load just like that, that I just have to, I'll be up all night measuring out. See, I measure out the nutrients come with it. So I go ahead and I have to pack it up so that try to make it easy for everyone. So that's just, you got two bags, you got calcium nitrate and you got your Epsom salt and your master blend. And that makes five gallons. So I try to make it easy because almost everyone can get a five gallon bucket at Home Depot Lowe's or you can get a pickle bucket. You know, if you're concerned about a food grade, I'm thinking, I think Lowe's or was it Home Depot? One of those that I went to, the buckets that they have actually out in the paint department now, you can find they've got food grade ones in, in the paint department. So if you're worried about that, um, even Home Depot and Lowe's has food grade ones. You don't have to go you know, chasing down the, the bakery or the deli for their pickle buckets or the icing buckets. Uh, that's pretty cool. I try to make it easy. So, you know, anybody get a five gallon bucket you can just open that up, dump it in, spray your water in it. Um, lots of people say they want to mix them separate. If you want to mix the calcium nitrate in two and a half gallons of water and you want to mix the master blend in two and a half gallons of water and then pour it together, you can. I've been doing this about eight years. I just toss both of those in together and I have a sprayer. And I just mix it around, you know, spray it and it just mixes up as it's flowing up. And that just makes it easy to uh, mix up. It's already weighed out. All you got to do is dump it in and fill it up with water. And then one of these takes about like uh, probably like a gallon to fill that up, maybe not even a gallon. So you'll have enough to refill that thing like almost five times. You probably go through a couple of crops before you even go through this nutrients right here. And then if you like it and you get into it, you know, you go on Amazon and you get you a big bag like that. And when I first started, I got a bag that was, this is five. When I first started, I got a bag that was 25 pounds. It was five times as big as this. I didn't know how much I would go through because the first hydroponic nutrients I got were like the pre-mixed ones that come in bottles or liquids. And I was doing a DWC, the floating raft systems. And I was going through a lot of nutrients, filling those up. So when i went to go get the master blend i ordered 25 pounds and it, it was a huge bag and it actually lasted me about five years so if you go back through you some of you are on uh facebook if you go over to my youtube channel and you look back i think i'm going on three years of video if you look at those three years and then keep going imagine that i was growing for a couple of years before i even started putting videos on youtube all of that came from that one bag and i think that i paid like $35 for it or, or probably 35 and probably like 20 something for shipping. And that lasted me like about six years. Uh, let's see, am I missing anything here? Washington state. Wow. Here's beautiful up there. With everything that's going on, what are the expected delivery dates? Uh, I'm not sure they're still telling me, you know, it's a couple days because we're sending most of everything like priority mail. So once I print up your label, that means that that day I'm heading to the post office. It depends on how early or late I get to it. And what they do is, uh, you know, this one sends it to like the main post office and they might not check it until it gets over there. 
but almost everyone's been getting it as soon as I ship them out. I've been getting messages and DMs like, hey, you got my package and it's only been a couple of days. Um, that was last week. So, you know, we'll see how it goes this week. If it takes longer than that, y'all, you know, let me know. But as soon as I print up the label here at my house, uh, an email should go out to you um, from Etsy. So check either your email or Etsy. And if you have any questions or you're concerned about it, um, go back on Etsy and just message me. And then I jump on there every day and check and I'll check the messages. So once a day I'll go in there and pop in and I can see them. Awesome idea. I'm using tomato food right now. Yeah, now. So getting your grow blend will help as a comparison. Cool. And if you all use anything else, see, I started using this. I tried a couple different things. That was about eight years ago. And Master Blend started working like really well for me. So, you know, when something works good, I, I hadn't planned on making a YouTube channel. So something worked well and I bought a 25 pound bag. I started using it. There was no need for me to keep trying other things. That's not to say that everything else doesn't work, right? So this works really well for me. It's easy. Like I said, I try to make it easy. You know, you take that and just dump it in five gallons of water. Some of the other ones were saying, you know, that if you mix them together, they'll coagulate, you know, that you, you have to get the measurements just right. And, and there was a lot that went into it. And, and this is just, you know, just dump that in. And, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. And as far as being exact, you didn't really have to be exact with it. Um, the, even the manufacturer, I think that I showed last week or a couple of weeks ago, I brought out the can that you can order off of uh, Amazon. It's got the master blend and Epsom salt mixed together and it's got the calcium nitrate. They give measurements on the back, but they had the instructions on it says use one spoon, you know, of the master blend with the Epsom salt and use a half a spoon, you know, the calcium nitrate. So, you know, how accurate is, is half of a spoon? you know, that, that you would get that just right. So they're not really concerned about like exact measurements with a product. So, you know, it's, it, that's, it's a little more easy going. That's why I said on this channel, we try to do everything that's simple for people to just get started. I want to encourage everybody to give it a try because once you do, you'll get hooked and you love it. And then, then when you've got all that down pat, then if you want to go ahead and, and try some different kinds of formulas, if you want to go and get you a, a meter, a pH meter, check your pH or, or the parts per million if you want to grow plants that are going to take a while longer like um like uh wood dust said um he's growing using tomato food are you growing tomatoes or what are you growing just leafy greens if you want to grow you know something that takes a lot longer and you're gonna to have to be refilling and refilling you might want to go ahead and get a meter and check the parts per million so just because we're doing everything and i do it without a meter the reason why i do that is so that People won't get intimidated. I want this to be where newbies who come on get excited about it and will start because I'm sure if some of you guys looked into hydroponics, you went down a rabbit hole, you know, you started looking it up. Then all of a sudden people are having all these tutorials about you need this, you need that, you need this, you need that. You're going to have to do this, you know, and, and sooner or later, like, you know, your mind's blown or whatever. You know, most normal people, a lot, a lot of people, you know, enjoy it and, and can get into it. But most people don't want to go through that much trouble to grow some lettuce. So I try to make it as easy as possible. I don't use any meters. I have never bought any. That way, if anybody says, you know, hey, you know, I think you're you're testing it anyway. You're just not telling us. I've never bought one. I, I've never used one. So if you get to where you get the basics down and you want to order them, I think they're on Amazon for like 20 bucks or something. And it's not hard. And then you can test it. And one other reason why I don't do it is that I grow in a lot of small containers like this. You know, there's six different spots. And I've got those all over and some I have that are a little longer, like eight foot, but I grow in a lot of different containers. That way, if something happens to anything, then this one gets trashed and not my entire garden. And then I just get some microgreens, pop them back in here. And I start over with that one. Now, if I have a bunch of these, sometimes I've got about 30 or 40 of these going at one time in my yard. If I had to go around and check with a meter, I'd have to check every one of them to see if the pH was right. And then if you guys don't know about adjusting your pH, you have to check it. And then you add like a couple of drops of pH up or pH down, mix it, wait a little while, check again. If it's not right, adjust it again. And if I had to do that with 30 or 40 containers, I'd never get done and then have to do it, you know, once or twice a week. So that's why I don't, I don't use it. I just grow fast growing greens, um, things that, you know, it's not going to be in there for a long while, use up the little bit of nutrients that are in there boom start another another batch 
that's a question. What part of Florida? I'm actually in Central. Always figured you were in Cali. Oh no, no, I'm uh, north northeast, just below Jacksonville. If you know where that's at, northeast Florida, just like Lotus. Oh, you're in Jax. I'm in Jax. Do you know about germination talking? Oh, do you know about the gentleman talking? Do not know. Oh, okay, you're talking about me. Okay, so y'all are talking to each other. Yeah, I'm in I'm in uh, north northeast Florida. I'm near Jax, but uh, like I said, I'm south of it towards uh, Orange Park in between like around where Orange Park, Middleburg, you know where that's at. Um, but yeah, cool. So another question some people have asked, I don't know if, if uh, most of you guys, were you in here before? Like uh, I had a couple live streams over the weekend. Or are you like new here? Uh, another thing I was doing was I have an ebook, you know, just kind of tells a little bit about how I got started to answer some common questions and that. And like I said, it gets new people interested in it and i sell that on my etsy shop it's like 4.99 but last saturday i started giving it away free because of all this nuttiness and everything that's going on and people are stuck in their house and people are starting to think too now that the, you know they've been going out and buying you know loads of uh toilet paper and sanitizer but they're also buying food you know you can buy like meat and and put it in your freezer but you can get frozen vegetables but like as far as fresh stuff goes you know you can only buy so much and shove it in your refrigerator and sooner or later you know it might get pushed to the back get wilted end up in your compost pile but if you've got these things growing outside and you've got leafy greens all over the place and you've got microgreens growing at the same time you can be harvesting off the the baby greens and as you pull those out you can take microgreens pop them right back in you know, just switch out the solution, pop some more in. And that's why I've got so many going at one time is that I keep them going over and over like in succession. Um, I just like emptied almost everything out of my garden right now. I want to start over for spring. I got a couple set up on a ladder system. That would be like the first little wave. And then I've got some more coming after that. And what I want to do is show you guys from the very beginning you know it's it's one thing if you go you watch a video and somebody's like hey look at my garden and everything's done you know if everything's all in bloom everything's you know working right and they go in and show you that i want to go ahead and show you from the very beginning so if you guys watched uh any of my videos on youtube or like two or three weeks ago we took broccoli greens and we put them in milk containers the you know the uh, i used almond breeze i drink almond breeze and they're the little wax, you know, uh, paper containers, just the, the little melt cartons. And I had 60 of them. I put the, uh, I grew broccoli microgreens, and then I took those and popped them in there. And if you go look at my YouTube channel, most of you are, are from YouTube here. You would have seen there was loads of them. Let me see if I'm going to mess around with this real quick and see if I can pop on a picture real quick. Me too. Actually, one traffic like away. Okay, so you're down towards Middleburg. Cool. Yeah, I just found your YouTube channel, made the whole idea of hydroponics seem much less scary. Cool. Awesome. See that that's that's the whole reason for everything. People, you know, are asking me, you know, should I do this? Should I do this? You know, all these things that people are telling them they have to do. I'm like, look, let's just do the basics, get the basics down, learn to grow something, eat some stuff, you know, find a little benefit in it. And then, you know, it's like baby steps and then you can start adding on to it. Hey, Arthur Moorhead, what are you what are you up to? Keep on growing, bud. Awesome. Appreciate you stopping by. Let me, uh, I'm going to mess around. This is a green screen here. And let me do, let me see if I can switch it around. I think I had a picture somewhere that I used a couple weeks ago. Yeah, right there. That's that whole thing right there. That's all broccoli greens. And it was in, I don't know if you know what a painter scaffold is. I built a shade house from a painter scaffold and that's one of the little landings that are on it. So it's two feet wide by about five feet. So that's 10 square feet. And inside of that, I don't know if I've got a picture. Here we go. That's what it looks inside of it. Let me get out of the way. So I took all those milk cartons and we took broccoli microgreens and put them in there and I didn't do anything to it. It, this was an experiment and I put them in there want to see how long they would last you know before that they'd grow on their own I didn't add any nutrients to it 
it's in a it's got a little shade cloth and some rain gets through it a little bit got in there some of them you know it depends on how big the leaves got some didn't get any rain so i let it go for months and months and this is what that's what we got without doing anything this is like if you put stuff in your garden and you took off for two months and you didn't do anything to it that's that's what we got that's the exciting thing about like hydroponics um your traditional garden you can't do that you've got to have your uh irrigation you know on a timer and that if that timer goes off and you're not there you know it's gone this was it totally off grid grown in milk cartons and um like i said totally totally didn't do anything to it and that's what people had to buy one get one free last week or the week before if you guys haven't got it the link's still down below i still got that i'll put a little banner up or whatever let me get back to here that way there's not like two of me on the screen let me see if i missed anything here real quick southwest florida okay cool arthur morehead you live in the same state i do i'm not getting a notice that you're live oh really that sucks and you're from youtube yeah youtube's real nasty about that hey chandra how are you doing um i've been checking your stuff out too with your new horse and the stable and all of that that's pretty cool i was a farmhand me and my wife for like three or four years and we took care of about seven well we started out as seven horses um really nice they're like big puppy dogs they all got a, a different um what do you call it? different personality nice mike where do you get your seeds from um if i'm growing if i'm just going to be using them for baby greens and just using them out in the garden you know to grow them into plants like uh, swiss chard and, and collards and kale and stuff i just get them up at home depot or something nothing nothing too crazy the broccoli i got online at amazon you're gonna have to look i got an amazon store like down in the description um if you click on it it'll open up and then down at the bottom it's got hydroponic supplies and it's got seeds um some of the hard to find seeds like red garden amaranth they don't have that like up at our home depot so i order it from there and i just get a little it was a little tiny packet like about uh it was small because the seeds are real real tiny just like an ounce and that's you know giving me i grow little five by five trays at a time it's giving me several different trays if you're trying to grow 10 by 20 trays if you're eating like a ton of microgreens you're gonna have to order a lot of seeds and that's one thing that, that microgreens really don't they're not cost effective if, if you're going to be eating like a lot of them and that's why i like to take some i i grow them and i eat some but then i take the rest and i grow them into baby greens and I get more bang for my buck. Um, so I get some down there. If you if you click on that, or you go to, if you want to go to Amazon and you just, um, um, I think what did I I Google or search on there? Something like uh, uh, seeds for sprouting or seeds for you know um, microgreens. I think Handy Pantry and the Sprout House. I think were both of the two of the names are, are ones that I usually get it from. And I think I've used Johnny Seeds one time, and I, I was pretty happy with that, too. Coffee time. We need to start a garden like yours next. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Well, we're having lots of fun with it. I miss that ranch, the scenery. Yeah, we're in the city now. My wife misses that. And there's Arthur. Cool deal. Appreciate you all coming in. Yeah, so that's what. So we're going to get started. And I just want to know. You know, like I said, I'm just I would just want to give everybody an update because um, if you ordered stuff like the week before, like last weekend, it says stuff should have went out by like Monday and I was waiting on this to come in. So it finally came in. So um, as soon as I can get them packed up, I'll start printing out shipping labels and you'll get a notification for that. So things are on the way. And if you ordered it like by this past weekend, you know, at least by Friday or, or next Monday, I think I'll have everybody caught up. Let's see, if you do beans for greens, you can get beans anywhere. Yeah, Asian markets, good variety. Yeah, that, yeah, you, you can try different places. I Asian markets, Indian markets, um, sometimes it's hit and miss, but it's like really cheap. Um, I don't know if you guys have had mustard greens, the real spicy, and I got a bunch of mustard seed from like the Indian Mart, and it was like a buck for a, a you know, big bag of them. 
and it lasts forever because I don't use like a lot of them at a time. And let's see, how am I, am I lagging on here? My, my uh, screen looks like it's getting real jittery. How am I looking and how am I sounding on uh, both the live streams? Cause it's, I can't tell what's going on like over in Facebook. Last time after I did a li live stream, I checked out on Facebook and it was like really bad. Let me pop me out and pop me back in. We'll see if that helps. Hey, Jeff, what's up? How are you doing? I'm fine. Okay, cool. It's just on my end. It's looking looking a little wonky. Looks fine on YouTube. Okay, cool. Yeah, five by five. Um, when I say five by five, I'm talking about the microgreens. I here. Now you're not, this is green screen, so you won't be able to see it. I don't have one with me because all of mine are green. Ah, I'll go get a blue one. That's invisible. <laughs> here, I'll turn off the green screen for a minute. If you guys have just, if you guys have just a minute here. Here, there we go. When I say five by five, I got this at the Dollar Tree. That's two lids. And I usually, I don't even use these two lids anymore. I just use one. I don't even, you know, this kind of keeps it stable. And instead of wasting a bottom, what I've been doing is just putting that right on top of here. So I only use one lid now, but this one's set up like two. But that right there, see that blue spot? That's about five by five. And if you get grow mats from um, Handy Pantry, you know, any, any hydroponic um, store, They've got them in big 10 by 20s and they got them in five by fives. So that way you don't have to cut them. If you want to save some money, you can get the 10 by 20s that fit in the 10 20 trays and you can cut them down and get eight, I think, out of each one of them. And it comes out a little cheaper, but you know, you're having to sit there and cut them all. They come in packs five by five. And I like this because it kind of fits it. I put five by five right there and it, it does good. Um, so I grow a lot of these because you sit down, you can eat some microgreens. You know, it's me and my wife. Or we can leave some, you eat some, and then you can leave some to pop into the downspouts for later. And then you grow them into baby greens. Wow. Let's see what else we got here. Here. We'll be in school. Let's see. I'm looking for something great on sound. Let's see. I'm looking for something like that to grow my sunflower microgreens when I get them. Okay, yeah, you ordered sunflowers. Sunflowers are cool. That's what I grow the sunflowers in. Now, the Dollar Tree still has these, but they've got black and red and blue or something, some different colors, and that's what everybody wanted, you know, green. That's what I started using that, the invisible box. I started using that, and I ordered a bunch of them, and, and I've been using them. I was selling them at first, and I quit selling them because I can't get the green anymore. You know, and I had to order a case. So I'd get a case and it'd be mixed. And I couldn't say, well, I want all green. They give you green and blue and red. So, yeah, I'm a little bummed out. You know, everybody wants a green. I, I could, you know, just order cases and get them for everyone. But uh, I can't get that anymore. Yeah, look at the Dollar Tree because they've got that same exact size. Uh, like I said, it'll be different colors. But, you know, if you're, you're just growing microgreens, it doesn't really matter. What my wife does was she she I build a little wooden box around it and she paints it up so it looks kind of cool. Let's see, cool idea. Wow, that's cool. I thought you had paneling behind you. Oh, okay, no, yeah, just my just my green screen. That's a uh, um, Streamyard does that now. Tested some dollar store seeds from American Seed Company. Yeah. Oh, they all sprouted nicely. Cool. Yeah. The Dollar Tree has some seeds in there if you want to pick some up from from the Dollar Tree. And that's why I like experimenting with everything. I think I did that a, a couple of times. I haven't seen those containers at my Dollar Tree. What section are they in? They're, most Dollar Trees, they've got one aisle that's like all the plastic stuff, like plastic laundry ba baskets and, and all the plastic containers. Um, and they're all different colors, red, blue, yellow, green. They usually have them up in there. Um, I'll do another show one night. I'll bring all of these different containers out. I like using that because, you know, I, I was over there making some and, and selling them to people so they could get started. And I tried to stay uniform because I couldn't like give somebody one type of container, somebody another type and somebody, you know, just a random container. 
So I just started using those and people got them and they were using it. And then, then that way, um, if they had the same thing I had, they felt a little more like safe, you know, when they, they felt a little more comfortable and growing and doing it instead of having something different than, than what I did. But if you go in the Dollar Tree, just about any container you get will have, you know, as long as it's got a little lid on it, a little bit of a lip, uh, it'll do fine. If you, and like food grade, people are saying, you know, oh, it's plastic. You know what about food grade? You can go down the kitchenware aisle that has Tupperware and you can use any of the Tupperware that's up there and then take the lid and just cut a couple slits in it, run a paper towel through it like that. And you don't even need the grow mat if you don't want. Now, what I've been doing is I sprinkle the seeds on and I put the grow mat on just so it's got a little more substance for the roots to hold on to. So they'll grow a little bit bigger because I want to take them and turn them into baby greens. And this is self-watering. So you go ahead and, you know, you put a little black top over the lid. You've seen my videos and I just spritz it a little bit. And after a couple of days, I pull that off. And then this basically self-waters itself and it'll keep growing. So you just have to watch that level in the bottom, you know, that it doesn't get down below the paper towel. And um, usually by the time it gets down that far, it's ready, it's time to harvest it anyway. That's why I like that size container. But if you go down into the Tupperware aisle, you can use just about any one of the containers that are on there. You know, something that's gonna be, you know, doesn't have to be deep like a gallon container, you know, it just has to be about four or six inches um not too big like i said i like to use the five by five because i can get the grow mat and then after i sprinkle the seeds on it i take a little fine vermiculite not like the big white chunky stuff it, it looks just like sand but it's called vermiculite and then i put the seeds down and i sprinkle that over the top and cover up that mat and the seeds and then that way what happens is i've have ventilation blowing on it that ventilation will blow across the top of that vermiculite and it'll keep it dry and that way you keep down the mold and the mildew because this is constantly staying wet. Whereas if you're growing like regular microgreens, you know, it's in soil that you can bottom water it and it, the top will kind of stay dry if you don't water it too much. And sometimes some people, you know, water from the top and then you end up with a little mildew. I sprinkle a little fine vermiculite and I found that that's been helping. Um, Y'all give that a try, see if that helps. Let's see, tested. Hey, Bonnie, just how you came in there. Tested some dollar store seeds. Okay, just saw that. You're good on YouTube. Cool. You should put the ranch in the background. Yeah, I'll get some pictures later, Keely. I just pop, popped up. I don't even think about it. Yeah, I'm fine. I just had to slow down. How do you control? Here we go. How do you control that fight? Oh, okay. That's what we we're talking about. I always have an issue with that, starting my seeds in little baby greenhouses. So, okay. So, you just heard what I was talking about, right? With the fine vermiculite. I'm... I think you can even try it with sand too. I haven't even tried it with sand, but the fine vermiculite is like really light. The plants grow right through it. It doesn't hinder it or anything. And you take it and sprinkle it. That way the ventilation that you have blowing on it, it'll keep that top dry. But since you've got the wicking coming up from the bottom, it still stays moist. So you can have like the um, self-watering thing going on and then it cuts down on the mildew a lot. Bonnie, Posh Notions, how are you doing? That's good, Arthur. I know I'm uh, probably behind on the comments, y'all. Uh, uh, be patient. <laughs> My other huge issue starting seeds is they won't grow dense. They grow skinny, tall sticks, and then are horrible to try and transplant. Are you transplanting them into the ground like soil, or are you transplanting them into this? See, I like when they get a little leggy. That's another thing, too, is that sometimes we had problems with them getting too leggy, and that's because of light. If you're growing them and you don't have your light down close enough when they're small, if you have them too far up, they're trying to get up towards the, the light. So they grow tall and they get leggy with this kind of system. That's good because if they grow about that big, you pop them out. You see, you've got room for your little plant up on top and then room for your uh, roots to hang down here. Is that invisible? I had a black one somewhere. It's a little better. That one's a little skinny piece I had. They're all packed up. Here we go. So if they get tall and leggy, you know, that's good because then you'll have a spot, you know, for here, if they're like too small, you won't really have any room. Then you want your roots coming down here and then you have your plant coming there and then it's just kind of holding it. So that kind of works, works good for it.
Let's see. You don't use nutrients in it, do you? Uh, no, I don't. I've been starting to put a little tiny bit, like a half and half kind of thing, because some people are saying it works good. I'm going to see how that goes. Um, some people do their like they like coca Cola or something. It's like just neutral. There's like nothing in it or whatever. And they've been putting like the seaweed, like that thing that uh, was down. People were asking. It's in my Amazon store. Um, some people were like getting some started with that. Um, what I do too, I've done is get seed starting mix at Home Depot or Lowe's, you know, that you're going to start your transplants then. He started like that. That's what it's made for is to start, start off, um, little, uh, uh, your little seedlings. So if you want it to, you think that you need a little bit of nutrients, go ahead and try that. It depends on how big you want to grow them. Like, like basically a microgreen is like that first set of leaves that pops out. Boop. And then that's it. That's a microgreen. When it grows a second, you know, that's the cod leading. When it grows a second set of leaves, it's called this, the first true leaves, the tree, the leaves that actually look like the plant. The first ones, the cod leaves look kind of like the seed itself. If you grow like a sunflower microgreens, the first two leaves that pop out, that's actually the sunflower seed. You, it looks like a huge sunflower seed and it's green. And then the next leaves that come out are pointy and all fuzzy. Those are the true leaves. So if you're growing just true microgreens, you're just going to wait for their cotyledon to pop out. It's not going to grow very much. So you don't really need nutrients if you want them to get a little bigger and for the leaves to get a little bit bigger, um, you, you get a little bit more of a harvest out of it. Uh, yeah, then you can put a little bit, maybe half, half of the nutrients. Um, this one, I think if you look at my channel, I introduced it in a new channel. They're like blowing up. They're like a great couple. They're called On The Grow. And I think um, if you look back a couple of videos on my channel, I got a link to their their channel. Or just look up on the grow and all they do is microgreens like I do. I do a bunch of different stuff. They just do just microgreens and a real cool couple. They got a concession style um, uh, trailer and converted it. And inside all I do is grow microgreens. I think you think, you know, they're selling them in that, too. But they grow all different types, walk you through all different scenarios. They, they taste test them. They uh, do experiments with them, like some with the nutrients and some without, or some in hydroponics and some in soil. So check check them out. Uh, anything you want to know about microgreens, they've got it. And of course, Pepe. I mean, Pepe's got a business going out of it. He's got a, an entire like hog barn he converted, and it's nothing but microgreens as far as you can see. It looks like beautiful. Would you by any chance be able to show the container again and set up with explanation? Yeah, which, which one? Let me do that real quick. And if I get behind on the comments, you guys just uh, comment again and, and try to get my attention. But let me pull the green screen off. Were you talking about the, the green, Michael? Try this. All right, this one. This is just a Dollar Tree container. That's one lid and that's another lid. And I just cut two slits in it. I got videos on YouTube showing how I did this. And all they did was run a paper towel up one side and down the other side. These are shop towels. You get them like at Home Depot, Lowe's or whatever. Those are the ones you use in the shop and they're like really tough. You can get, they're like heavy duty paper towels. Those will last a lot longer than the cheap paper towels you get or you can get bounty or whatever the you know the the expensive paper towel is this is actually two paper towels see there's the line right there so that's like one and two and then i kind of just folded it in half and it fits right in there so there's two slits through each one of these and i just put it through there fill this up with water pop that in and that's all all you got to do then up here the reason why i have this one flipped over is i put soil in there so like I said, you get your seed starting soil. You can put the soil in there, right? And then this grows really well, uh, pea shoots and sunflower sprouts. Those grow tall and they're kind of he heavy and they need a little something to hold on to so they'll grow up straight. Otherwise, just they're growing all over the place. So I put a little bit of soil in there. Now, if you just want to grow like amaranth or something, uh, pak choy, things like that, you don't need this top layer here. All you need is, you know, run the wick up here, put a little mat on it and then sprinkle some seeds on it, cover up with a little vermiculite um, and then get a, I don't have one with me, 
you guys know the little black containers you get to eat the ramen the soup or whatever comes pre-packaged and you you heat it up i take a little black bowl and put it over the top of it and let it sit like that for a couple of days and i'll come in and maybe lift it up see if it's dried out and i might have to spritz that top of that bowl keep it kind of humid and then once they sprout get so big i just pull that off and just let that go that's pretty easy and those microgreens we take and we set them in here and that's what we were talking about getting your pool noodle you fill this up with nutrients i usually do it right right to about there so you get the nutrients like what we we're talking about fill it right up to about there and then you get your pool noodle i had a live stream before where i actually had the microgreens out here and i was pulling them out you pull out your little microgreens and put them in here i actually cut one i don't have a scissors with me here we go i usually cut a little wedge out of it and push that wedge into the middle because that doesn't fit perfect so what it does is it leaves a little space seeing that right there that little hole you can set your little plant your little transplant in there if there's no space in there and you try to squeeze it like that you're going to squish your plant but see that leaves a little bit of space in there so you can put your little tender plants you know you usually want to mess with them when they're only that big right but now you can take them and just slide them in there be careful with it then you have the leaves coming up here the roots coming out there and then you take that and just pop it right in there like that and let that when you put your little microgreens in there they don't use a whole lot of nutrients this thing will go for a month before you even have to check to see if it needs any nutrients you do that and just set it over somewhere uh, in your yard you're gonna have to play around with you know where the sun's at if they you know you can't put like your tiny little seedlings out in like full 90 degree sun all day long so you're gonna have to mess around with your uh your yard a little bit all right i'm way behind on the comments let me see if i did that answer answer it and let's see i'm gonna jump down to the bottom if i missed anything that's important or whatever you guys just go ahead and uh, comment again i saw that i was like way way behind it's nine o'clock so i'm up up on the comments here I've been trying to get into your method and found it looked easier than a lot of one. Yeah, I try that. That that's what I've been trying. Yeah, Bonnie, thanks. Um, I I try to make it as easy as possible because, like I said, I enjoy it. I I went through experimenting and had rough times. I had a lot of failures, you know. And and when you guys try it too, you're gonna go ahead and try some stuff, and it's not gonna work. Don't get discouraged right off the bat. I I did this for three or four years before I even thought about making a youtube video uh we were having fun just just testing everything out and doing that um so when you guys start out you're gonna have some failures because where i live is not the same as where you live and our water is different um the, the humidity is different the sun coming in is different you know there there's a, a ton of different factors so you guys are gonna have to play with a little but so i wanted to make instead of worrying about all that and ph and blah 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 and, and pumps and I want to make it as simple as possible and that's why i love dr cracky when i found his you know he was just like got a gallon container stuck a lettuce transplant in there and left it until it was like a head of lettuce and and it used the nutrients he didn't add anything to it i was like that's amazing that's what i need because i'm on the road so i didn't i started out with a bunch of little containers all over the place and then i thought well i've got an nft system that i've tried hydroponics and it was the round sewer pipes excuse me and i took it apart made them into the crack key system but then it was rolling around i had to like build little things or strap them down so they wouldn't roll and then i found out you know i i was actually installing these on a customer's house one day and i was like you know what that i can if i can stop the water from coming out the ends that's perfect it holds about the same as the the pvc pipe and it sits flat on your handrail so I was like, you know, so then, you know, that's when I got into trying to heat it and bend it. Um, some people, if you don't want to get a heat gun, they make a little elbow. You can get some food grade silicon and just silicon those elbows onto the end and just wrap foil or something around the, the ends of it. Then you don't have to worry about, you know, trying to heat it and everything. I've got, you know, I had a heat gun because I had it for work. We, we paint, we used to peel paint off. But if you don't want to get one, then then you don't have to worry about it. Let's see, you mentioned in a video that the green didn't seem to have any issues with algae. 
Any idea what other colors work as well to keep the algae down? Um, for a little while on, on some of mine, uh, think like blue, maybe one the blue or red, one of them like got algae like really fast. I'm not sure if uh, I was thinking that the green myself, um, thinking back to my like uh, science, they said like light is all a spectrum. It's like all the different colors of light. And when you see something and whatever color it is, if you see something red, they told me that's actually every color but red because that that's absorbing all of the light and it's bouncing the red spectrum back out and you're seeing the red spectrum and it's absorbing the other spectrums. So I didn't know if like the green containers, you know, that it was absorbing the green and most of the green was bouncing back towards our eyeballs. You know, some was going to go inside, but not as much. So it was absorbing. You know, I was thinking maybe that that's what maybe kept the algae down a little. But now if this sits there for a month or a month and a half out in the sun and you put nutrients in it, it's going to get a little algae, you know, because it's you can see through that. I mean, I've got the green green screen. Yeah, it's invisible. But um, that's why with like your microgreens, too, if you don't put nutrients in it, then usually you won't get any algae. If you put just a tiny bit, if you put a lot of nutrients in your microgreens are going to grow fast and you're going to have harvest them. They're not going to use up all of the nutrients and you're probably like wasting wasting a lot of nutrients. Cool methods. Cool. Does basil do good? Basil does awesome. The a container like this, you can grow so much basil. But another thing to try is if you go and get some the the plastic totes from Walmart, I have one video on there. Um, I wish I could just list these all or whatever. But one year I put uh, basil in a 16 gallon tote, filled it up, and it went months before you know went went down but those i grew them from seed and i put one two three i had four cups in it and each one had two or three plants in each one that thing grew you know basil leaves and these things were huge and i'd get them about that big and i'd harvest it and i take some of those and transplant those into other containers and you know when you cut a little basil off you can um reroute it so I'd cut those, start some more, and that thing would just grow back. And it grew four huge harvests out of um, almost, you know, that 16-gallon thing. I think that I filled it up like once. And, and again, I didn't do anything to it. I just put them in there and let it sit, you know. And it's not like every day you're over there checking the nutrients, doing everything. I just let it sit there. Gives me an idea for my bay window. Yeah, yeah, cool. I have a ton of pop bottles safe for self-watering system. Yeah, give that a try. And that's what I saw too. That was one other thing. You know, I looked up everything from the, the Garden of Eden, the mint lighter system, um, uh, square foot gardening, the the window gardens, uh, window farms, I think they did. That was like an open source thing where they had like an idea and they put it out on the internet and said everybody test and experiment with it and then everybody report back and, and then everybody's kind of learning from each other. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, just all kinds of things. And there's some people, now I look at different countries, um, uh, like developing countries, because here in America, you know, we're, we're kind of spoiled. We just go up store and we, we buy what, whatever we need, or we order it online and we just get going. And some of those are, they just have to use what resources they can. And it's pretty cool to look and, and they, they like get it down to a minimum. And a lot of the stuff that I learned was from watching like some people like in India or, uh, Pakistan or, or Africa, and they're sitting there out in the desert and trying to grow, you know, some food for, for their village and that. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, those must be plastic then. I thought they were a little, okay, no, these are, yeah, these are vinyl. And I hope, it, yeah, I hope everybody knows that the, these are vinyl. They're not aluminum. You won't be able to heat and bend them and cutting them because one person did. I thought that, it, you know, I had mentioned that enough times. But one lady said she was just heating it and heating it and heating it. And she goes, I can't get it to bend. And I was asking her about her heat gun, what setting she had it on. Finally, I figured out she bought aluminum, you know, what you call it. Because she was like, would tin snips work better or whatever? And I was like, oh, you have the aluminum ones. I need to download the ebook. I garden grow, but this is completely new. Yeah, this is this is fun. Now, and I'm not. Uh, trash in like traditional gardens. We have a little small traditional garden. Our moringa is growing in a traditional garden. Uh, my wife is growing her herbs, you know, in there. Some herbs do good in it. Basil does really well. 
some other ones, oregano and thyme, they do kind of okay, but you know, you plant that in a pot and it just like grows wild. So we've got traditional garden too. So we've got a mix, mix of both. So give them, give them, give them both to try. Got to run. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. No problem. Yeah, appreciate you being in here. Bonnie, the down below is just the link to the ebook if you want to uh, get that. And, it, and it's going to be up there too. You don't even have to download it. Uh, if you come back here, you can always just click over there and you can just view it. You don't have to download it if you don't want. This is my first time growing basil from seed and already all the seeds have popped. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's awesome. And once you, once that gets going, you're going to have basil to basil. I mean, you can make pesto if you get too much. You can get in and, and uh, whip it up into some pesto. But it's just awesome if you're having a sandwich or, or you want a little caprice. You just want some tomatoes and you have mozzarella cheese. You just go outside and get fresh basil. I went up to the store. Um, I cleaned ours out for winter. And was getting ready because like i said i want to start from the very beginning with y'all so I, I harvested everything cleaned up stuff and i got one little section going and i'm gonna walk you all through all the other sections and so we got rid of everything and my wife wanted some caprice she said go get me some basil and i harvested all our basil i went up to the store and i got one little tiny box the the you know the little thin clamshell it weighed like about three ounces or something it was like 3.99 or 4.99 and the basil, every one of them was like wilted or had black spots on it or and didn't look all that good. And I was really bummed out. I think before I was growing, I didn't really know any better. I was like trying to find the best one. But once you grow your own and you go back to the store, you're like, you know, that, it's just ridiculous. I think this would be way less money, messy in the house. Yeah, with the kiddos. Yeah, yeah. And kids, kids love to do, you know, stuff like this. Can I put regular end caps on the gutters? Yeah, Jeff, I think I answered that if you didn't know what, um, I don't know if you can find any end caps if you use gutters and you cover up the top, but if you're using a downspout, they don't make a cap because usually these go up and down your wall, right? That's where the rain runs down. So this would always be open. They don't never make a cap for that. You know, your gutters, they have end caps, the gutter that's up on the side of your house, but the top stays open. So some people have took like a material put across the top and drill holes in it um but if you have this they've got uh elbow you know that when this comes down your house it's got a little elbow and it shoots off like a 45 degree angle i'll do a video on that too i've got two elbows sitting out there and i was going to show people i just haven't glued them on yet you pop them on they have a little elbow and then you just cover that top and then those little ends if you just cover them up then you can pop them off and and fill your nutrients from there you don't have to pull one of the plants out I planted moringa seeds today. Awesome. Started one last week and gave it to my mom. Oh, that was nice. That's nice. The, the moringa plant, like I said, I don't like to come on and try to tell people like all the health benefits and superfoods and this and that. But but I heard that the you know it's really really good. It's got lots of different minerals. But it, it's a plant that you can actually get protein out of it too. Whereas like plant based, we get like you know like soybean. You have to eat like soybeans and the beans. This you grow a plant in the leaves. You actually can get some protein out of it so if you're growing a bunch of moringa in your yard you know you just pop some of those off and put them in your smoothie you know you get your protein for the day um but it grows like a tree and then right now we just went back I, I, it didn't really get cold here in florida we had a couple days it gets cold and usually your moringa you have to cut it back and this one we just let go kind of wild and as it's, the weather cooled off it started losing its leaves and and my wife still harvests them off the top and they started sprouting a little again but a couple of my cut back but this is something it, it's a perennial and it's uh um it's gonna keep coming back every year so once you plant it and you start you know having them out there and they start growing you can trim it back and prune it and, and it'll keep coming back every year you don't have to start from scratch um so yeah moringa moringa is awesome i just just started with that i love sprouts and you can't get them anywhere here yeah the, i think the reason why bonnie is that if it's like here in florida uh, sprouts are highly regulated either they're the and the reason that's why they're kind of expensive too we have like bean sprouts but bean sprouts are easy to grow i got videos on that too they're easy to grow in your house but basically sprouts when you put them in a container you leave them in there they're they're grown in a wet environment and i checked with like the um ag department and stuff and uh, you know because i was thinking about like selling microgreens and sprouts and everything years ago and the the sprouts are highly regulated because they're in a moist environment and it's real conducive to to grow and mold and mildew 
and you pull it out and you're actually eating you you know it's hard to wash it off you're actually eating the part that the mildew is growing on whereas microgreens usually it grows in the soil and your microgreens grow up from the soil and then you trim it off some basically the mold of mildew if you had any is down below what you're cutting whereas like the the sprouts is grown in a container and it's growing all over it because everything's wet so it's like yeah yeah always getting recalled and that that's the reason why so basically if you can grow them at your house and kind of watch them don't let them go too long you know that that's probably better i'm i'm afraid to grab sprouts from the store myself Let's see somebody said you can put them in a smoothie too oh yeah aloe yeah we've got a bunch of aloe plants growing out there I didn't know this too. I thought if you had an aloe plant, that's it. But they grow like little, they call them pups. So it grew a lot of little pups and we popped those off and planted those and, and we've got aloe all over the place. So aloe is like a real, it's good for your stomach. You know, if you've got, you know, just like you use your burns in that, your stomach, it's not feeling good. You can cut some aloe, peel the green stuff off and it's just like uh, clear and see-through and you take that and pop it in your smoothies. Let's see, what do you do about white flies? I'm having trouble with them indoors. I, it, white flies are always a, a real mess. I think that um, Brad from Hidden Harvest Grow Lights, he he grows inside in his basement, or and he's got he's he's building out this huge place because he sells his grow lights and that. But he used um, I can't remember what it's called. It's a little fan, and it's they they have these little replacement strips that you put in that attracts the white flies. You put a new one in there. And you turn the little fan on and the white flies get attracted to it and it sucks them inside. And he said that worked real good. Um, if, you, if you check him out, he's got a channel, I think, here. It's called Hidden Harvest Grow Lights. He's on Instagram all the time and he sells grow lights. But you can go through and look or you can message him. And it was called something like, I don't, I can't even remember, Handy Natty, Natty something. Or Jeff, do you remember what that was? That seemed to work real good. The whole yellow paper, like a bright yellow paper rubbing Vaseline on. It caught some for me, but it never like attracted all of them to it. You know, if it, if they incidentally were flying around it, you know, it, it, some got stuck. But I never never had any luck with that. Uh, some other people took little vacuum cleaners. You know, not uh, not your one that you're using for your carpet. You know, the little handy ones that you use in your car, the little battery operated ones, and had it like on low and just kind of vacuumed up the leaves and stuff, and it vacuums all the gnats up. Let's see, you're talking with Jeff, Publix has some. I've never seen, I've never done it, but I've seen a lot of videos, people using something like it. Yeah, that, 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 that. Yes, they are, do not eat list. Oh, okay, yeah, when you're preggers, yeah. Yeah, definitely, like, like I said, I'm just afraid to do it. Do you have a list of plants that you recommend for this system versus traditional style? You're inspiring me. I want to start helping people set up systems in their home. Um, no, I don't have a list. I, I could work on it. Basically, anything that doesn't mind its roots being wet a lot. That's why lettuce is good. Lettuce, you can have all of the roots wet. They, they That's why you see a lot of hydroponic lettuce in the grocery stores, but you don't see a lot of other hydroponic stuff because other things are a little harder. Lettuce doesn't mind all of its roots being wet, and they'll actually grow it on a styrofoam raft that sits on the water. And as the water goes up and down, it just sits on it. The cracking method, your styrofoam stays still or whatever you're using, you know, your your pool noodle, your you know, whatever you have it in, and the level goes down. And this little area in here is is moist air. These roots will actually absorb oxygen, whereas the leaves absorb carbon dioxide, you know, for the plant to live. The roots need to absorb a little oxygen for the plant to be healthy. And that little space down there is what kind of helps it. So you don't never want to keep it slammed full of water all the time. You want to keep it, you know, a little uh, airflow in there. And any plant that doesn't mind the rest of its roots, like being wet all the time, you know, is basil. We've grown, I, we grow collards, kale, Swiss chard, pak choy does awesome. Um, most of your lettuces, most of the lettuce now I'll grow as a cut and come again um i haven't grown like uh like romaine i get romaine it'll start to grow and I'll, I'll start pulling leaves off i don't try and grow a whole head of romaine you know so if you think of this you know it's going to be something fast growing um if we get cabbage i'm not thinking of growing a whole head of cabbage in it um what do you call it i'll, I'll grow it and start picking leaves and and use that as like a cut and come again 
some people have grown a little, you know, as you get more advanced, you can grow. Jeff's grown some stuff in his, uh, um, where are you at Jeff in your basement or garage or spare room? And he's, he's grown some different things in there. People grow, you know, tomatoes, peppers, you can grow, grow different things, but you're going to have to watch your nutrient level, kind of, kind of keep an eye on things. Then if you can put a bubbler in there, aeration, that's better. If you can, uh, uh, like the NFT systems work better. So you might have to work your way up. So basically leafy greens, think leafy greens, most of like your herbs and that is basically what, what works really well in, in this. Don't don't start right off the bat and, and try to grow turnips and, and carrots and uh, uh, tomatoes are cool because um, think of most of your plants where you can cut them and you can take them and root them. Those are do good in the system because then then the stem doesn't mind getting wet. If the stem gets wet like a tomato, even above ground, you'll see it starting to grow some extra roots. So that's why tomatoes do good is because the, the roots can get wet and it, and it does all right. Let's see. I can't remember. I had two different ones. Oh, okay. Winter kale to cut and come again. Awesome. Yeah, kale. Kale is awesome. And that's the one beauty about this is that if you're growing things like to the baby green stage, you guys remember back. I, I don't know how old everybody is in the chat. I'm in my fifties. Kale was a garnish. Nobody ate kale when we were growing up. You know, in other countries they did. In America, it was a little piece of garnish that was on your plate. And it was cheap at stores, like 10 cents a pound or something. And um, then the health food craze came around. So the prices went up because now all of a sudden it's a superfood instead of being garnish. So now the price of kale has gone up. And now people want, they found out that kale is chewy and tough and rough. It, you know, the raw food movement started. So they're trying to eat it raw and they're going, well, you get vinegar and salts and stuff and massage it and everything. And, uh, you know, a lot of work. Then they figure out if you eat the baby greens, you know, before they get big, they didn't even call them baby greens then, that they were tender. So now you're taking the plant before get the, they take a microgreen, just grow it a little bit bigger to baby green. So they're not really taking it too long to grow. And they're taking that and selling that for more than the friggin' kale was. So it's getting really expensive, like six, seven, seven six ninety nine or something uh, for a container of it. And you can go ahead and grow a bunch from seed and grow them as baby greens they're nice and tender you put them in your smoothies you don't really have too much of a taste you know if you load up your whole container with nothing but kale or nothing but broccoli sprouts it's going to have a green taste to it but if you want to you know pick some and put them in there with your other stuff and throw a green apple or something celery you know a couple different things in with it um but when they're small and the baby greens you can put them in your salad it adds a little bit of a different flavor you put them on your sandwiches and um your soup you just have a hot bowl of soup and like I do with the pak choy, you don't even have to, when they're small baby greens, you just toss them in there and they just wilt. You don't even have to cook them or anything. Let's see. How many, how many things did I miss here? Have you grown cabbage? Yeah, did. so we were just talking about cabbage, right? Did you hear, hear what I was talking about, Duke? Basement, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, Swiss chard, yeah. Swiss chard is awesome. I've got that 16 gallon tote. And I think what I'm going to do, if you guys saw a couple of my other videos, uh, a tree fell down on it, squashed them. I pulled the tree off the branch and trimmed some of the, the ones that kind of fell over. And it grew back without me doing anything. I haven't added nutrients, haven't done anything to it. And I showed that a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month ago. And I still just left it out there. I haven't added nutrients. It's out where rain gets into it and everything. I'm just, I think I'm just going to let it go if my wife agrees to it because she's out there eating, eating the kale, but I like to experiment and do, like I said, I want to make things as easy as possible. So even if I see it going south a little, I'm just going to let it go and see how long this thing can go without me even messing with it and how much we're, you know, we're just keep going out there and harvesting, getting a couple of leaves. Now, most of the stuff you see, I don't grow a ton of it. I don't like to waste food. And we don't um, cook a lot of it because if you, you can get a bunch of collards and cook it down to like a, a serving, right? So what we do is you take it and you, if you grow them like baby greens and that and you chop them up, if you put them in a smoothie or if you put them in your salads and that, you're using a small amount at a time. So you're not like taking this huge amount and, and cutting it down and, and Swiss shards is the same way. I'll go out there, I won't like harvest the whole Swiss shard and sit there and cut it up and, and cook it down to a little tiny serving is that we'll use a whole leaf for like a wrap. 
and put stuff in there and wrap it up or we'll chop it up and put it in our salads and that or in a smoothie or what have you. So we'll use just a couple at a time. So you push yard will keep growing. You keep cutting it down and new leaves will keep popping up. Then if you have a salad, if you got enough of it growing or you want to cut the little tiny leaves, those look cool as garnish and then you can eat them. They're nice and tender. It's interesting about tomatoes. Yeah, yeah, sure is. Because the tomato, the whole stalk, all those little hairs you see on it are actually little roots. And and you can actually take the tomato plant. The best thing to do with tomato when you take a transplant is to actually lay it down sideways and bury about eight, six to eight inches or up to a foot of the um, base of the stem. You know, take the leaves off of that and and it'll grow roots all along that and make a more substantial uh, base for it. I grow a little gem butter head. Yeah, that's a good one, too. And let them grow into heads currently growing broccoli as well. Cool. Let me know how your broccoli goes, uh, uh, Jeff. We had a bunch of just, uh, I let them go to seed. You know, they had little tiny flowerets. You know, it wasn't like a huge head of broccoli. I don't think you're going to get a huge head of broccoli in any of these static systems, you know, if you don't have the water circulating. Um, but they had little, little tiny broccoli. And I let them all go to seed. And the entire NFT system just had yellow flowers like all over the place. It's pretty cool. Little bees are coming out. I stuck a piece of ginger. Here we go. Yeah, kale is awesome. I stuck a piece of ginger root in a jar with toothpicks, and it's interesting to watch it grow. Not sure what part. Uh, the ginger that you eat, that's the root. I don't know if they call it like a tuber or, or whatever. You plant that. It'll actually grow a green leaf. Green leafy plant will come up. I don't know if you've seen a garlic plant. kind of looks like that. And then it'll actually have a beautiful flower pop out at the top. But you let it grow and grow all season long. And then when fall comes and it starts to wither and die, you let it go ahead and just kind of die off. Then you dig out the root again. You, if you dig underneath, you'll find ginger that you'll recognize from the store. Turmeric, same way. If you find turmeric in the store, turmeric's really healthy for you. It's in a lot of Indian dishes. If you find little turmeric fingers in the store, go ahead and take those. You can pop those in the ground. And by the end of the season, you pull them up. They're called fingers. You have turmeric, well, you know, look like a hand with a bunch, bunch of them on there. Really cool. That explains how we've had spontaneous plants pop up. Yeah. What's your opinion on using wood shavings in your garden? I tried a little on my winter tomatoes and they didn't like it. Some say it robs nitrogen and others says it stores nitrogen and releases it. Yeah, I don't know. I think it depends on what type uh, of wood you use and what you chip up the different, different ones. Like, um, like some people use pine needles to uh, mulch and uh, like over winter, but like blueberries love it. Uh, I think it's got a lot of acid or something. I forgot what's in it um, when it breaks down, but then other plants don't like it too. So your wood shavings, that's what I watched. Um, who is that guy? Uh, he had the garden of Eden, the back, back to Eden and where he just had like mulch everywhere, let it break down for a couple of years. And then he just started planting in it says he doesn't water or anything. Um, but, uh, I don't mulch with it a lot of it. What you have to do is, is have it go a year or two years where it's already breaking down. If you take just plain mulch and throw it on the top, then it would, I think that it does have a problem with the nitrogen and everything. Um, once it starts breaking down and you put a little bit more on the top, when it starts breaking down, then you start getting that ecosystem going and all the microbes and everything breaking down. And, and it, but that, that first year, if you just throw it on top, I don't think the plants really like that. It's getting a hit on it now. Okay, cool. John, what, what's up? Just sorry, pop in there. Congratulations. Um, uh, I want to talk to you too, John. I might want to have you on my other show, The Lottery of Life, and, that, and uh, uh, talk to you a little bit. Thanks for having the live chat. Yeah, no problem. I love doing this. Due to the current health crisis, many of us are homebound. And it's gr yeah, you're growing kale which is compact. Okay, cool. I'm going to check that one out. Prison kale grows great using cracky. Awesome. Appreciate that. I'm going to get, I'm going to check that one out. Yeah. And that's why I did this. And that's why, like I said, my ebook, I do have it for sale that, you know, people, you know, if they want to help support the channel, you know, they get it. It's like five bucks. But then I thought, you know, with everybody, maybe that's not interested in this or, or haven't heard about it. Maybe if we just give away the ebook, you know, that I get people uh, kind of turned on to it. So um, I've got that link down there. If anybody wants, you can just pop over there. 
you don't have to leave your email. You don't have to. You can just look at it or you can download it and you can take that link or you can download it and give it to your friends or you can just do whatever with it. I don't collect the emails. I don't. It's not a funnel to something else. There's there's nowhere else that it links to. It's just that ebook on that that one link there. So you can do that. And anybody that's ordered my ebook, if you get a little upset that you ordered one a couple months ago or whatever, and, and now I give it away for free, just let me know and I'll send you a coupon code that any future order you have, I'll give you five bucks off of it. I'll give you a little coupon code. And when you check out, you can just take it back off. Uh, whatever's going to help everybody out. I've been giving turmeric to my horse. Oh, cool. It helps with this arthritis. Yeah, I've heard a lot of cool things about turmeric. And so we love growing it. Nice. I never knew that. Yeah, appreciate appreciate it, John. CN ratio. Well, what are you asking about there? Wood shavings. Okay, we'll balance. We'll unbalance the CN ratio. So you have to compensate. Okay, yeah. Thanks very much. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, so that the, the what James is talking about too is that your all of your your wood shavings that very first time you've got to actually have it put on there. And then I think people are confused because they watch the Back to Eden, and that guy's just like growing stuff like fruit trees and vegetables, and they're growing huge. And and he says he doesn't water, but he didn't get out there and just like mulch a bunch of trees and and start growing in the wood chips. He he had that stuff down there. He's talking about looking at a forest. And how nobody waters a forest, nobody tends to a forest, but all kinds of stuff grows out there. You know, God's got something going on, you know, that that when we clear land and we try to grow stuff, we've kind of destroyed that ecosystem. And he was looking that all of that stuff falls from the trees down to the forest floor. And years and years and years, you know, it's breaking down, breaking down, fresh stuff falls on top. There's things in there eating it. There's mold growing. There's mushrooms, all kinds of fungus. There's this whole ecosystem. That's what makes soil. And that, you know, he tried to replicate that in his yard. So all the wood chips and everything that he's got, they weren't just thrown on there that very first time. They were on there for years. They, they, they break down and he, and he um, gets compost and mix compost in there sometimes with it and, and lets it keep breaking down. So um people get confused because if you watch it and you don't listen to all the specifics it looks like he's just got a wood chipper and, and he's growing food in, the, in wood chips and there's a little bit more more into that thank you nice chat cool awesome appreciate it lotus have to run catch you later jeff appreciate you coming by and thanks for all the help too jeff helps out a lot he answers a lot of questions for people um real great guy like i said he's in my uh facebook group if you all can go over there, keep on growing. Uh, he jumps in there and helps some people out too. You're awesome. Thanks for sharing your knowledge and experience. No problem. No problem. I, I really enjoy that. Can't believe you're so generous. Well, it's it's not just me. It's all, all of you. And, it, and it's because like over the years, you know, if you're new here, if you're old, you probably heard the story. But if you're new, you know, I was just uploading videos and that. And, and after a year or two years, I started getting messages from people all over the place. And they're saying thank you. And I don't know who they are. They go, I heard from you through this group or that group. And I, I'm not in those groups. And what happens is you guys are out there sharing. And, you know, so you take, you know, what I've done and you pass it out to other people and they pass it on to someone else and pass it on. And, and they might not never make their way back around to me. But as long as they're out there growing their own food and it's something that helps them, you know, that's cool. So I, you know, I've got my ebook. Like I said, I, I got to make a little money on this channel. You know, I've got, you know, buy supplies and, and basically I'd like to do this full time on down the road. You know, right now I'm on the road traveling and that maybe when I spend more time at home, I can grow things in a little different manner. Um, so I make a little bit of money off of it, but I figured, you know, there's some people who may not want to spend five bucks and, and, but if they had that information, maybe that would be the trigger to get them started and, that they would just maybe experiment with it. You know, that's why we have just, you know, like a little small, something like that. It's nothing fancy. You try hydroponics, you, you know, you go to a store, they're gonna tell you like hundreds or a thousand dollars worth of stuff you have to buy to get started. You know, this, you can go buy one of those up at Home Depot or Lowe's and, and cut some holes in it and a little pool noodle at the dollar store or use your, your containers, your melt containers and use recycle things. We're gonna be doing a whole show just on different containers and stuff that you can use um you know that that you've got around that we're going to go into recycling 
but you know, I just love sharing stuff with everybody and, and, and I do it because all of you guys do it too. You know, so it's, it's, it's all of us. It's group thing. I buy those baby onions at the grocery store and plant them. Yeah. They cut off above the bulb a few inches. Yeah. My wife's got some and I, we, we've got a little tiny, um, container. I think it was, uh, it was called an ID box or something from Rubbermaid cut a couple holes in the top. Now, if you grow onions, you want to keep the water level below the bulb. Just let the roots go down into the water and don't ever fill up above the, the bulb. It will rot. And we put green onions in there. And whenever we want them, we just go out and harvest some. And the, the green onions are like bringing two, two feet long and, and drooping over. You know, it grows so much we can't even keep up with it. That's kind of what I do with my raised bed, composted in the fall. Yep, yep, yeah, same thing. Also at the grocery store, they sell 99 cent packets of coriander. Oh, cool. And grow cilantro. Cilantro is awesome. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people say it tastes like soap. I love it. It's it kind of gives that little red, that and cumin, like the Mexican flavors, you know, that that's what kind of gives away like a Mexican dish just for anyone who might want to know that. No, I didn't know you could. They, they, oh yeah, the coriander seeds in the, so you just got the one that they have over in the spice, uh, spice section. Yeah, so coriander, and then if you grow cilantro, you let it go to seed, and you have coriander seed. You can like use it next uh, next time, or as you can use it uh, in your cooking. Love listening. Thanks, Mike. Hey, appreciate it, John. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, what is today? Tuesday. I gotta go work either Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, DM me sometimes, John. Let's let's chat chat sometimes. I dig what you're doing. I build four downspouts. Oh, cool. Awesome hydro garden hanging on my fence. And, from your video. Awesome. Appreciate it. Um, someone, let's see, Instagram, his name was modern, modern arts. And he does like different, like woodworking and different, different kinds of art. But he went ahead and got some of the downspouts and his, his backyard looks kind of cool. It's like landscaped and all that. And he had a big cement wall and he put some little hangers on it and he put these downspouts across them and, and he was growing bok choy and lettuce and all kinds of stuff in it. And he was posting those on Instagram. That looked, looked pretty good. I keep saying I'm going to get you guys pictures together and put them on here, but I never find time between, you know, all the other stuff I do. Like I said, I would like to make this full time where I can just put, you know, my heart and soul into it. But this is kind of like part time. And, you know, I've got to go to, you know, my real job and make money. And then I've got all kinds of other stuff going on. Um, but, you know, if I could spend a little more time, I'd go ahead and, and uh, try some different things and, and uh, get all your pictures together and come and do like one whole show and just show I'm, it's like almost every day I'm getting a DM or a message or, or something. Uh, don't use my email right now. I'm, I'm to be honest with you guys. I haven't got to the email. I know that some of the videos say email me at keep on growing. That thing gets me bogged down whenever I go over there. Cause like this where I'm answering questions, except I'm sitting there typing, you know, and it's not like talking to people it takes a lot longer. And I, there's tons of them. So I haven't really got to it. I was thinking about actually like shutting it down and, and just answering questions like this or doing a frequently asked question uh, thing somewhere. Um, I have tons of containers in a bin in a garden ready to be upcycled. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yep. My breakfast nook is now a garden. Awesome. Cool. Catherine. And I think I know who you are too. So like I said, any, anybody who's been sharing their pictures, appreciate it. One day I'm going to get them all together uh, and share it with people on here. I might even put it as uh, an update. Uh, the book that's down there, that that's something I wrote like a year, over a year ago. And I haven't put too many updates into it. I just kind of changed it up a little. If you ordered a book like last year or something, go check the new one out, download it. Um, I put some people in there that you guys know, Pepe. Fossos, Marty's Garden, CB's always in here. I see Jeff, I forgot you had um, On the Grow is in there, but I put a couple of gardeners in there that are helpful for you guys. And uh, I'm going to be doing an update with some people are concerned about food grade materials. And that's why I grew stuff in the little milk carton. Um, I've done some in glass containers. I was using different ones. The NFT systems, you can order uh, food grade channels. Those are a little thinner. I've got one. And somebody's been asking about it and I keep forgetting to do it. But hey, thanks for the super chat there, Edward. Awesome. Appreciate it, man. Um, what do you call it? I got the uh, one food grade thing and I said I was going to do a video on it. 
and I haven't really got around to it. I feel bad, but but I've got a food grade NFT channel. They just I'm reluctant to show people because it costs about four times what this cost. So, you know, people over here were trying to do things cheap and easy. And uh, and and then I'm going to show them something that costs like 40 bucks or 50 bucks, you know, by the time you, you build it out. And it's for like an eight foot section instead of twelve dollars for a, a, tw a 10 foot section. But I'll, I'll do that, too. But uh, I do a little update on food grade materials. You know, like we said, the buckets, you can get regular buckets or you can get food grade and and put that in there too and because when i do a video we have a little bit of argument people are like plastic safe and and plastics are harmful and, and they go at it and i like to accommodate everyone so i'll show you know how anybody can do it like cheap materials and if somebody wants to use food grade we try to accommodate everybody so i'm going to have a little bit of an update that we'll talk about food grade materials I might talk about grow lights and put uh, brads that i've been using in there um if you guys have any uh, success with any grow lights that you use them from like Amazon or, or hydroponic shops or wherever you ordered it from. If any of those are working good for you, go ahead and uh, um, let me know too. And, and I'll pop that in the book, but I'm going to make an update. And that one link below that that's to the ebook, I'll put that, uh, that update on there too. So if you pop back in there once in a while and look at it, if there, there's two of them on there, you can download that. I'm just going to uh, ship that out for free. Like I said, and if you if you want to support the channel, like appreciate it, Edward. I really do appreciate that. You know, some people just order the ebook just just to help support the channel. But if somebody you know orders it and they're like, hey, you're giving away free now, let me know. I'll give you a coupon code, and if you buy anything else, you can just get five bucks off of that too. So, um, like I said, just trying to accommodate everybody and and anybody that's helped support the channel, I really appreciate it. I never thought that you know stuff like this would be going on. I started this like three years ago, and I was just making little you know, grow boxes and, and showing people, I was like, that. you know, it's pretty cool. Let me see. Shade cloth. Shade cloth, 40%. Okay. For lettuce. Good evening, Mike. Hey, Chris, how are you doing? Chris is growing stuff. He, he got, what'd you, what'd you get, Chris? Uh, were they sewer pipes or were they like the downspouts? But he's, he's got a lot of, um, I think that he recycled. Somebody took them off their house or something and he got them for free. And when he was fixing those all up, Shade cloth, yeah, I've been using that yeah, 40, 40, 50. Um, I think I've even got the black one on there. It, it, it's even a little bit more. It depends on, you know, how hot that sun is that's coming in, you know, but you still want to let light in. So uh, you're going to have to play with a little, a little bit. You know, you're going to tell if stuff's not growing fast enough, it's growing slow. And if it's too hot, they're going to be wilting. So um, what I've done with shade cloth too is, you know, put one layer of shade cloth and see if that works. And if it works fine and if they're not growing, you know, you might have to go down a little. But if you need, if it's like not protecting your plants as much, you can fold it over and double it up too. I'm interested in the lighting. I have space in my basement once I clear, clear out your eBay stuff. Yeah, cool. And if you go uh, check out Brad's, the ones that I have, it's called Hidden Harvest Grow Lights. And you follow him on uh, either Instagram or YouTube. He has giveaways like once a month or something he's starting he's he's rebuilding the inside of a this big building and he's setting stuff up and it's really a good light and uh um there's some they're cheaper they're on like amazon and that or or you can get them anywhere but it depends on how much you want to spend right now leds that's the exciting thing about growing inside is that with the technology you know like people are trying to you know we we had incandescent bulbs in our house in our house and then all of a sudden we have like uh, fluorescent ones and and those are like using less energy and saving us money and now they've got leds and and that started out an led just started out as a light emitting diode it just started out on your calculator the little numbers that are on it those are little light emitting diodes that's what electronics started out with and as those got more efficient um and they turned they're like made them into lights and now they're making grow lights out of them so they use hardly any energy and they don't put out a lot of heat. That's one thing we're getting, getting the, the sunlight, the, the energy, the spectrum for your plants before, you used to have heat. So if you put them down too too close, you could burn your plants. And if you got them too high and you had them too bright and, and heat was going everywhere, these LEDs don't put off hardly any heat. You can get them really close to your plants. And if they're closed up, they don't, they don't really, um, I put a little fan on it and a little heat escapes out the top and it's nothing like the the big bulbs that you had before so it's real fantastic time and as time goes on those get better and better and cheaper and cheaper the first led lighting that came out was like really expensive 
There he is. We were just talking about you, Brad. Talking about your lights with fluorescent work. Yeah, fluorescent works if you if you've got it. Like I said, it depends on you know if you want to start out with that. Uh, Pepe started out with those, and uh, you know move up. Like I said, if you go there's brad right now if you, you can just click on the little three dots so i don't have to put a little link in there you can just click on the little three dots next to hidden harbors grow lights and you pop right over to his channel and uh um see all the stuff he's growing from there check out his instagram and you can see um what he's got growing there too he had what do you have like a river ponics thing going on too yeah he said fluorescent's great and especially if you're growing bonnie if you're starting out like microgreens and they're only going to need a little hit, hit with a little bit of light. Um, they were, they were, they work cool. That makes sense. You can get those at the Dollar Tree. Cool deal. All right. Oh wow, it's been an hour and a half already. All right, you guys. Anybody have any more quick questions before I pop off? I didn't. If anybody wants, I've still got. Let's see. Have the banner. Should put that up. Some people pop in and out because somebody said I forgot that last time. Downspouts are still on sale. Buy one, get one free down there. I've just about caught up with them. So if you've ordered them last week, those are going out like tomorrow, the next day. And then if you ordered like up till yesterday, those will go out by Friday to Monday. So I just got all the rest of the nutrients in and be up all night weighing them. I feel like a little dealer with my little digital scale and, and the little baggies and, and filling them up. I'll be up all night like that. You can mix your tubes, 27 on even number. Oh, okay, cool. Didn't harvest grow lights. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, check Brad out there. He's, he's a wealth of knowledge on that. And if uh, uh, Brad's actually looked into the science of it all, because like he built like his grow light. So he knows a lot about lighting and the what spectrum the plants need and, and a lot of other stuff too. So, you know, check him out. He, and he's always willing to help if you follow him on instagram you can dm him on instagram just like we do bonnie and ask him any questions he, he's always willing to help people this has been wonderful thank you so much hey no problem I appreciate you stopping by and like i said you know anybody you know that comes in and and helps out you know with you know purchasing downspout whether you're doing it to help yourself or you're helping the channel i love you guys and and if you can't do that go get the free ebook and just give that out to your friends if you like um, anybody you think that would maybe be interested, but don't, don't want to really take that step because, you know, we all hear hydroponics and it sounds kind of cool, but then there's this big learning curve and there's a lot of money that goes into it. Um, this way we're going to, with that little book, we just teach you how to get your feet wet, you know, get started. And then you get excited about it. Then you can spend a little bit of money and work your way up and everything. I'm bold bike. No problem. No problem. Brad, you're, you're a wonderful guy. Y'all check, check him out. And actually, Brad, when I do, I said I'm doing an update, that ebook that's out there, the update I'm going to put in about food grade materials, you know, to grow in. And another thing people were asking about was lighting. And I'll go ahead. Um, the last ebook I put uh, Pepe and Marty and that in the bottom. And I'm going to pop you in there so that if anybody gets that ebook, they can just click on over to your site. So that way I don't have to keep uh, referring people over there. Then they can just, if they find you in there, they'll just pop over and, and, uh, you might uh, be answering a lot of questions. <laughs> All right, Chris, we'll catch you later. Appreciate it. Just subscribe to him. Cool deal. Yeah, Fred's an awesome guy. All righty, cool. So no more questions. I'm going to pop off. Like I said, I didn't know it was an hour and a half. I've got to get to all of this. Like I said, I've got a load of stuff that I'm going to pack up. I'm going to see how much I can get off tomorrow. The rest will be out Thursday. And then um, some more orders after that. So, um let me get to that. You guys, if you got any more questions, follow me, Twitter, Instagram, wherever. And uh, uh, like I said, don't use my email because I haven't really looked at that too much. But if you got any questions, we don't you don't have to wait for a live stream. Just message me somewhere, you know, unless it's like something really long. You know, you can just DM me or tweet at me and, and I'll answer back. So appreciate it. I really love you guys. I. Uh, I'm humbled, you know, Brad says he's, um, I'm humbled by, you know, all the support that I, I get and, you know, and just by all of you guys getting out there, spreading the word, teaching each other, 
you know, spreading the love, you know, that that's what it's all about. This, like you said, the internet's what we make it. We complain a lot about it and say, you know, it's a bad place, but it's all what we put into it. So the more good that we put out there, the more good that it's going to be, you know, I don't know if that's the better it'll be or whatever, but you know, the, anytime you get on there, you make a conscious choice to, to do good or bad. And when you guys are doing stuff like this and, like I said, it might not even have anything to do with me. If you just do something to make someone smile, you know, you're putting good out into the world. So that's what we're all about, right? Be the change. All righty, guys. Lift and spine. We'll catch you later. Keep on growing. If it'll let me end. I might be on here all night with y'all. <laughs>